In this video, we're going to create a web application automation in the LeapWorks Studio. We'll begin by creating a new flow and giving it a name. The canvas will populate with a starting block where you can either build out your steps one by one or use a recorder to show LeapWork what to automate. In this video, we'll be using LeapWorks Smart Recorder to create a flow that tests user logins in Salesforce. We'll start by selecting the action to start an application, followed by selecting Start Web Browser. From here, we'll select our browser of choice, input our URL, and here I'm going to use the Selenium driver, which is going to default to a temporary or cache-free profile every time we run this automation. As LeapWork navigates to the page of our choice, you can begin interacting with it much as a normal user would. You'll notice that as we cursor over objects, LeapWork is intelligently recognizing the elements under our cursor. We'll begin by choosing a text input box and defining a step. LeapWork intelligently identifies the objects we click on and stack ranks actions based on the likelihood of use. Here, I chose type web text to enter the username. I'm going to select the password field, choosing type web text as well, only this time I'm going to change the text to password for sensitive values. Finally, we'll select the login button, select the click web element, and choose left click. Now. Once we're logged into our web application, we can continue using the same set of steps to navigate the website. We could potentially run a search, create a new user, but in this example, I'm going to validate the profile username matches with our login credentials. Choosing the profile element on the top right, once again, we're going to choose Click Web Element. And then I'm going to scrape the text from the username and pull that back into LeapWork. Here we're going to use the Get Web Text action block. Once completed, now we're going to move back to the studio by saving and closing the recorder. As we come back to the studio, we can see LeapWork has now recorded all of our steps as action blocks. We've launched the browser, typed in a username, password, clicked login, and scraped the web text. Now, what we want to do is make this a little bit more data-driven and extensible. So what I'm going to do is pull in a data source to feed in some of these values. I'm going to open an Excel document, and here we're going to pull in some of the rows and columns to fill in some of these fields. For this, I'm going to choose a local file and then define the range, which is going to give us the ability to choose which values we want to pull in from the column headers. Now that we have our values, we can begin passing them to other blocks. I'm going to put in the URL uh, for the Start Web Browser, and then I'm going to pass the username to the Username Text block, as well as Password to the Password block. Now, the final element to this flow will be adding in a comparison block where we can feed in the name from our Excel spreadsheet and compare it against the text that we scraped from the website, effectively ensuring that as we iterate through this Excel list that the usernames that uh, we logged in with match the user account profile in Salesforce. Now that we have our automation defined, the last component will be adding a pass and fail block after the comparison. This way we can tell LeapWork to pass the test if the names match and to fail if the names do not match. The last function I want to cover in this video is reusability and maintenance. We've created a Salesforce login flow here, and it's highly likely that as we build out further test cases in Salesforce, that we'll continue to need a login function for each test. This is where subflows come in. By selecting the relevant action blocks and right-clicking them, we can define a new subflow that can quickly and easily be reused in future tests. Subflows also give you the ability to make updates to a process that may have changed, and then propagate those changes to all automations that contain that subflow. Finally, 
We'll save our flow and add in a comment noting our changes that will be appended to the version history. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.